for the Vikings, we we're, uh, for the Alpha, we're doing uh, three basic profiles that kind of reflect uh, the the three like major areas of our combat. And we really, uh, what we really want from this Alpha is a lot of feedback on how the combat's working, uh, and you know how the characters like it, and you know uh, how the players like it, and you know get all that feedback so we can tune it properly and, and have this great core system. So we have uh, Thane, who's the kind of all-around guy. He has the the shield uh, with the really you know uh, easy defense system, and he has a sword for great you know cutting edge. So he has uh, a lot of margin for error for his attacks. Um, he also has some some skills down here, and these skills right now uh, are, you can see there's a locked. So when the game it releases, we'll actually have custom profiles, but uh, and and we'll start off with locked ones for the new players, so that you know they don't have to think about those choices. And once they've learned the game, then they can make these uh, better choices. But we'll have like these pop-ups that kind of explain what the skills do. And so these skills, basically, you'll have one locked for the medium archetype, and then you'll have three customizable ones. And you'll be able to pick a shield, but it depends on what your primary weapon is. So if you picked like a two-handed weapon or a ranged weapon, like a, uh, like a uh, bow, you're not going to be able to equip a shield at the same time. And then secondary weapons can, could be a, a one-handed axe, or he can pick a throwing weapon, which could be a, a knife or a, a, an axe. And then we'll also have a javelin. Uh, which is a big spear, basically. <laughs> I want you to be an aggressive opponent. You hit the left mouse button, mm -hmm. and uh, and then you put drag in a direction to initiate the swing, and then it's back to control of your mouse. If somebody's doing an overhead attack with their sword or axe, mm -hmm. or if somebody's shooting at you with arrows from a, uh, from a higher position, yeah. you'd want to move your shield up there to protect better and low down for uh, sweeping attacks as well. Uh, so you press F and you'll perform a special move. It's dependent on what weapon you're actually using. So different weapons are gonna give you different kind of special attacks. Uh, and though they're easy to do by you just hit the F button, so it's a one button uh, move, it also leaves you very exposed. Yeah. And it also um, it uses up a, dec a decent chunk of your stamina. And uh, it does take precision to hit, so you do have to be accurate with your attack. So we've had a dodge system, and you use alt and then a direction, and you'll actually dodge a specific direction from your opponent. And then, to make things even more interesting, we added, if you press alt and your left mouse button, you'll actually do a swing attack, and you'll follow up with an attack. It just adds a lot more footwork to the combat and making it about, you know, uh, more about that and not only about defensive blocks and parries. Then we have the Huskarl. So he's like our heavy archetype, so he's the big guy, so he's doing the two-handed axe right now. So he's gonna have more uh, male protection, so he'll have a little bit more uh, armor protection, uh, but he's a little bit slower. His swings aren't as uh, fast, uh, and it takes a little bit more time to power up. Uh, then we have the Heard Man. So he's, uh, he's basically our scout type character, ranged, all cloth armor, no male armor at all. Um, and then he has a one-handed axe as his secondary, and he has the bow as his primary. I can see your face right now, and I can actually shoot through there. Wow. <laughs> and get a headshot. Yeah. I mean, that's the level of precision that we put in the game. So there's lots of uh, places like this in, in all of our maps. Uh, we use the stamina system to kind of uh, affect how many ar arrows they had. I, I just, it's just not fun when you're an archer. I mean, we want to encourage them to kind of not be close to combat typically, unless they pick to like a more aggressive comp, uh, archer type of class. Uh, but uh, most of the time, we really want them <clears throat> to be using their, their, what their specialty is and also going after other archers. So we've added a sprint system. You have to sheath your weapon uh, to run. Uh, but if you if you run as well, you can tackle your opponent. Oh. And when they fall, it gives you the advantage. And I missed, of course. <laughs> but if I would have hit that, I get the advantage of you know killing you. And so I get that I get that upper hand because I used a, a tactic and a strategy against somebody who was running. The sprinting actually doesn't affect your stamina at all. No, uh, I mean, and that's something we want feedback on. Like, does it feel too much? But I mean, since you can't attack with it. Uh, you know, it really is just a, a, a way to travel, and it's not a, a method that you can use to kind of take advantage of and, you know, use the momentum system to kind of amplify the power of your shot. So when you're actually chasing somebody, you'll always catch up to your opponent. 
So uh, basically we put that in there because it kind of fit the time. You're never supposed to run. You're supposed to stay with your, your teammates. You know, you can also close the distance with a throwing weapon. Now they're not as effective obviously as a bow, but they do, uh, they offer a cool uh, option to kind of soften up your opponent and close that distance. We can also break your enemy shield. So oh, wow. yeah. yeah, so I did a really power attack. I basically shattered your shield, but that leaves you vulnerable, so then you have to rely on parrying. In that situation, you would have wanted to go for a left-handed swing, and that's the that's where the value of the direction really comes into play, is more when there's more stuff going on around you, and, you're, you, and sometimes you even try to use that against other people, you're hoping that they'll go for the wrong swing, and then you know that'll block it, and then you'll come in with the, the swing and, and do that. Yeah. <laughs> do you have um, decapitations in this? Yes. Yeah. A reward uh, for players uh, when you get that. Yeah. That means, I mean, you have to hit in the the gap. You have to hit flesh in their neck yeah. to get that to happen. So it's very accurate. Uh, so it really plays into making, uh, leaning towards uh, being a bit more believable and, uh, and realistic. So you know, you're not going to get hit in the chest and your head pop off. So these are small levels. They're specifically meant for the pitched arena uh, b game mode, uh, which you know puts one life, two players against uh, you know uh, eight versus eight, and uh, really kind of shines in that uh, those uh, game mode in that game mode. Uh, but we also have uh, larger maps that we'll be releasing, you know, that are themed in a, in a kind of uh, in a setting for uh, you know eighth, ninth century England, so Britannia. Uh, inspired map. So we'll have like a, a level with a cliff and the players will like kind of push their way up from the cliff where the uh, Vikings landed and uh, fight against the Saxons up to uh, up to another monastery. <laughs> Uh, and, and you know, it's on a cliff side, so it feels very, uh, you know, it feels very much like what you would expect uh, from a Viking uh, first uh, invasion. <laughs> we made a Viking town of York, so uh, we have a, that's another one of our bigger levels where the, the Saxons are attacking now instead of the instead of the Vikings. <laughs> so reverse the roles. So on the large maps, we can support up to 64 players. Um, and uh, on the smaller maps, we're not sure what the amount is that uh, before the server might start like chugging and want to uh, kill itself. Yeah. But what we'll probably do is that the official servers will stay at a consistent um, player count that we feel is really a healthy number and, and we'll let uh, players who uh, rent their, and set up their own servers. We'll let them kind of uh, max out the the performance and see, you know, if they want a 32 player, uh, you know, arena map size, then hey, go for it. The more powerful your attack, the louder your, your scream. <laughs> and we're gonna add taunts as well. So we'll have a lot of different taunts. And we're also looking at other mechanisms, you know, to kind of try to improve the combat, but some of that will probably be post-launch, so I don't want to make any promises. Uh, and what we want to do is for the enemies, you'll always hear them speaking in Icelandic uh, for the Vikings, uh, so which is the closest to Old Norse language. Sure. Uh, so we're hiring some Icelandic voice actors to do that for us. And then we want to, uh, we're looking at trying to find uh, some Old English speakers so that we can have the the Saxon speaking in Old English uh, when you're a Viking, but when you're a Viking, you'll hear English uh, so that you kind of uh, hear what's going on better. Uh, yeah. yeah, so then, you know, just to bring the world to life a bit more and just add that little extra layer of cool. Now, now you're knocked down, so now I gotta finish you off.